I am back with some more Pinterest inspired recipes and these are good ones. What is up you guys? My name is Kira if you are new and in today's video I'm sharing some more Pinterest inspired recipes. I talked to you guys a couple of months back and let you know that I have boards upon boards on my Pinterest app that I am forever pinning things to. I just never actually go in and cook or prepare or make any of the things that I pin. And I know that you guys are usually my best source of motivation. So I decided to start sharing a segment on my channel where I share things I've pinned to my Pinterest board. So in the description box below will be my link. So you can go ahead and follow me on Pinterest if you'd like, so you can check out all of those boards. But there will also be the direct links to these recipes so you can go ahead and pin them yourself for future use but today we're making a sicilian stuffed meatloaf and then this bacon brown sugar wrapped chicken both of them super fantastic all of my family members loved both of these recipes to the point where they will be added into our normal rotation so i am very excited to share them with you guys today so we're going to start off with the sicilian meatloaf and this is the one i was most excited about because half of my family members like meatloaf and then the other half does not so i loved this take like a rollatini with the ham and stuff on the inside so i have some tomato paste some red pepper some red onion some garlic that is fresh ham that i made on easter that i froze and defrosted for this recipe i have parsley i have two eggs some basil and then in the back i have some parmesan cheese i also have some italian breadcrumbs you could use panko breadcrumbs if you like but the italian Italian breadcrumbs are going to work out the best. I have some olive oil. Of course, you're going to need some salt and pepper. And then as far as the ground beef is concerned, uh, the recipe calls for two pounds of ground beef, but I think that I probably have maybe about two and a half pounds there. So it'll be a little bit more than the actual recipe called for. And I also have some shredded mozzarella, which you can use that, but you also could use some provolone in this recipe if you want to substitute for that. But other than that, we're actually going to start off by taking a frying pan. We're going to throw a little bit of olive oil in that frying pan and then we're going to throw in our peppers and our red onions and we're just going to sweat them down until they're cooked through, they're translucent, you smell them and then we'll throw in that chopped garlic and we'll give it a good stir and then we're going to let that cook about three to five minutes till everything is rendered down. We're going to put that off to the side. We're going to let that cool and while that's cooling we'll We'll go ahead and prepare our meatloaf mixture. So like I said, I have about two and a half pounds of 80-20 crown beef. We're going to add three quarters a cup of breadcrumbs and then a half a cup of some Parmesan cheese. We're also going to add our two eggs and then we're going to add two tablespoons of the tomato paste. Now I have that tomato paste in the squeeze tube which makes it super convenient but if not you could just obviously use some tomato paste out of a can but once we have all of that in there we're gonna add our salt our pepper our parsley and then now it's time to mix how do you guys mix your meatloaf or things like that do you use a spatula or something I know that it's suggested you get in with your hands but I literally hate this you guys like this is the step I hate the worst I just don't like getting my hands in the meat like that I don't know it kills me I really need to get myself some like plastic gloves or something but once you start just giving it a general mix then you're going to add in your peppers and your onions and once it's thoroughly mixed and incorporated we're going to put a piece of parchment paper down on our surface and then we're going to dump our mixture that has those peppers their onions and all the rest of our meatloaf ingredients and we're going to try our best to get it as thin as possible so i worked with this for a while and tried to get it literally 
as flat and even as thin as I could. And then once you do that, you can go ahead and lay your layer of ham. You can use cold cut ham or like deli sandwich ham if you want. We're just using what we had on hand and that ham from Easter was delicious. And then now I'm adding some basil. So I could not find like fresh basil pieces. So this is the dried basil from that little container. And I was a very impressed with it. It said it was partially dried and I got it from Target and I have since bought it again and they're parsley because it is that that good. So once that's on there, you're going to go ahead and put on your shredded cheese. You, again, you can use pieces of provolone if you don't want to use the shredded mozzarella. And then you're just going to go ahead and roll it up like you would do a rolled cake, like a pumpkin roll or something. I once tried to do this and I it was an epic fail. I filmed it and still shared it with you guys. So I'll link it if you want to see my pumpkin roll monstrosity, but I'm just not really good at this, but I did my best. I worked for quite some time to get it to the best log that I possibly could with as much cheese tucked into the inside as I possibly could. And then we're going to stick it in the oven at 350 degrees for an hour because you want to cook thoroughly. Now here's what it looks like when it comes out. Some of the cheese did leak out out of the sides but there was still a ton of cheese on the inside so this cooked perfectly the only thing I didn't like is the grease from the ground beef and the cheese all at the bottom I should have cooked it on some kind of rack like a turkey rack or something like that just so it wasn't sitting in its own grease but that's the only thing I would tweak for next time if you want to keep this recipe like completely keto because this is technically like a low carb or keto recipe you can serve it over some zoodles or something like that you can serve it on the side of roasted potatoes or a veggie but being that this was more of a sicilian feel it just screamed a sauce kind of meal so i defrosted some of my sauce that i had homemade in the freezer and i just made a half a pound of spaghetti just something to put on the bed of the bottom now here's a picture of the meatloaf when it was a little cool i let it cool so that you guys can see when it's warm everything's kind of oozing everywhere by by letting it cool I was able to actually show you what it looked like on the inside but you guys this was super good served over that bed of spaghetti with that layered tomato sauce I wouldn't make any changes besides cooking it on the rack I highly enjoy this meal and we will definitely make it again So now we're going to go ahead and get into our next recipe and this is the bacon wrapped brown sugar chicken which although I'm linking the recipe for you guys down below I incorporated something extra which is the organic barbecue sauce from Trader Joe's because I absolutely love this stuff it is so delicious but I have extra chicken here and extra bacon so again you'll have to check the recipe for the exact measurements because the last time I made this my four-year-old almost ate the whole darn tray so this time I wanted to double it so I have four huge chicken breasts there in that package I have a full pound of bacon I have some salt and pepper some brown sugar again that barbecue sauce that I'm adding in that's a little bit different from the recipe and then I also am adding in a little bit of chipotle pepper they only call for the salt and and the pepper and the brown sugar but just a little bit of chipotle pepper adds so much flavor you can use cayenne but we're not looking for heat we're just looking for that extra flavor which is why the chipotle comes in key in this recipe so now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to take all of our chicken cutlets out and we're going to lay them onto a cutting board and then we're going to start cutting them into strips so you want to go ahead and think concept of chicken finger so you want long strips now I fillet my chicken and I happen to consider myself a really good filleter I'm not patting myself on the back but I am because I have have a knack for cutting chicken so usually out of one good chicken breast I can get three cutlet pieces so once I trim away all the fat then I cut it into three pieces and then I was able to get about four to five strips out of each piece so this ended up being a ton of chicken but I knew that it wasn't going to go to waste so once you're done trimming your chicken and you get all of your little pieces onto a tray then we're going to go ahead and make our mixture 
Now, like I said, our mixture is just going to be that brown sugar, that salt and pepper, and then that little bit of cayenne. So I have two cups of brown sugar here. Again, I was doubling this recipe. So if you wanna do what the actual recipe says, it'll only be half, but I put in my salt, my pepper, my little bit of chipotle pepper. It was probably only a teaspoon to all of that brown sugar. So it really isn't for the heat, but chipotle really has a nice flavor. And then that is it, you guys. So you're just going to take all of your strips and you're going to continue to roll them in all of the mixture until all of your chicken is covered in that brown sugar. Once they are all coated in that brown sugar mixture, now we're gonna go ahead and wrap them in the bacon. So here's the only downside. I love this bacon that I get from Costco. You get four pounds in a package for like $14. And I love that each package is a pound. Sometimes when you get those bulk things, they'll only be about 12 ounces. The thing with doubling this recipe is I kinda had to be a little chintzy on the bacon had I had had prepared myself better I probably should have doubled the bacon or maybe got some of that really good quality thick cut bacon because that would have served even better with this recipe because at the end of the day you guys bacon really in any recipe is just delicious but go ahead and add some brown sugar and bacon then that is it so I just lined them all up on the plate and I gave it a thin coating of that barbecue sauce and then I stuck it in the oven at 350 degrees for about 25 minutes and the only thing that I'm gonna comment on again is I probably should have cooked this on a rack because between the chicken and the bacon it cooked in its own grease and oil so just to make it a little bit on the healthier side I probably should have cooked it on a rack just to conserve some of that but then we're gonna just go ahead and add them to a platter so that we can give them one more coating of that barbecue sauce because that barbecue sauce from Trader Joe's is is just fantastic and it really adds that perfect flavor so once they're all on the platter we'll go ahead we'll give them one last coating and then look at that you guys this is just the perfectly cooked chicken the bacon gives the chicken so much flavor but then the brown sugar almost candies that bacon so you get that really sweet flavor that mapley so it's almost like a breakfast in your mouth with the soft tender chicken and just that little hint of that chipotle on the back of your tongue it is just so 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 incredible you guys and super super easy i mean it takes longer in the oven than it took to prepare this so i definitely suggest you guys giving this recipe a try but that, you guys, is it for another Pinterest-inspired recipe video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, make sure to give it a huge thumbs up. If you guys decide to try any of these recipes or you've tried them before, let me know in the comments below what you think of them, if you've done anything different, because I love to constantly keep tweaking this. I love doing that with recipes that I find, just kind of adding our own little twists and turns, our favorite flavors, just to give it a whole nother realm of of flavor on the plate during dinner time. I love that because we get bored of the same old things. So if you are new here, hit that subscribe button because I will be sharing these randomly as well as more food content is always on this channel and so much more. So thank you guys again so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.